Over 4 billion people wear glasses and can't live without them. 73% of all adults in the world wear sunglasses. Imagine you have a company that has a monopoly over that and that you can set the price that people pay for their eyewear. This is Luxottica, a company that has that. It's believed that they own 80% of the eyewear market and their only goal is to expand. How is that possible? How can a company make a monopoly from a necessity like glasses? Today, we will explore the life of its founder, how he managed to build a monopoly, and what exactly makes Luxottica unbeatable. Luxottica was made by an Italian named Leonardo Di Vecchio. Leonardo had six siblings. His father died five months before he was born. His mother couldn't afford to feed a family, so she sent Leonardo to an orphanage. People said that Leonardo was killed with his hands. One day, people from the north of Italy came to a shop where Leonardo was working and offered him a job. Those people manufactured sunglasses. There, he made molds for small parts of glasses. There, he also learned the business of manufacturing glasses. Leonardo didn't have any formal education in business but that didn't stop him. He started selling frames on the Luxottica in 1967, and seven years later, in 1974, he acquires Caron, a company that deals with the distribution of glasses. His first, let's say, breakthrough was with Armani. In 1988, he went to George Armani and told him, have you ever thought about glasses, your brand name, your style, and your ideas? Your other policy was, well, most of people can't afford an Armani suit, but they can afford Armani glasses. This strategy worked so well that later Luxottica would get licensing deals with Dolce Gabbana, Chanel, Ralph Lauren, Versace, Prada. In fact, almost every designer brand you can think of. Sorry if I butchered the names, which I probably did. But not just that, they just don't make it, they design it also. The brands send them their new collection and people at Luxottica take inspiration from that and design the glasses. Basically, Luxottica designs them and manufactures them. So when you are, for example, wearing Armani glasses, are you really wearing Armani glasses or Luxottica glasses? That's not why they have a monopoly. This is just one piece of the cake. There is much more. Ray-Bans are probably the most popular glasses brand in the world. Guess who owns them? But what they did with them is unbelievable. See, many years ago, movie stars, celebrities, presidents wore Ray-Bans. They were hugely popular and highly available. In the 90s, you can get them at your local gas station and supermarket for $30. Today, you can't buy them at your local gas station or supermarket. And they are more than $30. Much, much more. That's because Luxottica bought Ray-Ban in 1999. They completely removed them from everywhere and would relaunch them for much bigger price and sell them only in big retail outlets like Lens Crafters, Pearl Vision, Sidious Optical, Target Optical, Sunglasses Hat, and many many more, which are all owned by Luxottica. Okay, they own the biggest glasses brand, biggest retail shops, and make almost all designer glasses. But there are still famous glasses brands, for example, Oakley. When Oakley was on the top of the world, Luxottica would remove most of Oakley's glasses from their stores. This move would make Oakley's stock fall down like a house of cards. When that happened, Luxottica would step in and buy them. Imagine that business meeting, the guy who made you fall bought you. Now, was that a plan to sabotage Oakley to buy them or just a plan to run them out of business so that they can improve the sales of their own brands? We will probably never know. Okay, but what about eye insurance companies? This is a huge business, especially in the US. They certainly wouldn't let one company to rule. One of the biggest eye insurance companies in the US is iMed. iMed has doctors working under the name. Guess who the owner of iMed is? And not only that, when you go to a doctor who is under iMed, he will offer you Luxottica glasses and most likely you will buy them from the doctor because you trust them, because you think they know what's best for you. You can say that all I talked about in this video are expensive glasses like Ray-Bans, Oakley and designer glasses. There are a lot of glasses brands that have much lower price than the brands we mentioned. For example, Vogue, they have prices that are affordable for most people if you want quality glasses. Luxottica got the Vogue in 1990. They got it all, expensive, affordable, for all kinds of people's buy power. If you want to start a glasses brand, you're competing with a company that is established on the market for decades. They are setting the price and you need to follow them. Even if you open a glasses shop, you simply need to sell Exotica products if you don't want to close your business. 
you need to have Ray-Bans in your shop. Simply said, if you don't play by the rules, they will destroy you or buy you. Even the CEO said, everything is worth what people are ready to pay. Luxotica is selling you an illusion. When you walk to a shop to buy glasses or sunglasses, you see many options. But the truth is, you don't have any options. All the glasses you see are owned and made by the same company. They really don't care if you will get Ray-Bans, Oakley or Prada glasses. It's all made by them and their profit margins are enormous. Glasses aren't really expensive to make. Just look at what you can get at Alibaba. But what if I told you there is still more to their power? The glasses industry is an oligopoly. That term means that in an industry, there are few companies that dominate. Luxottica is a manufacturer of frames. For glasses to be fully made, you need lenses. Now, the biggest guy in the lens segment of eyewear making is a French company named Essilor. They own the lens market. They manufacture their own lenses, have their own lens technology, and also their own research departments. I found some studies, but first let me say that these numbers aren't confirmed. The study says that the difference in owning the eyewear market of Luxottica and Essilor is 1%. So Essilor is too big. Luxottica can't buy them so that they can make lenses for them. What can Luxottica do? Merge with Essilor to create a giant company that nobody can overtake or conquer. They named it Essilor Luxottica, a giant that had in 2020 revenue of over $15 billion and profit of $150 million. Their assets in that same year were over $56 billion. Leonardo De Lecchio passed in 2022. Before his passing, he was worth over $27 billion. He was one of the 100 richest people in the world. He was the second richest guy in Italy after the guy who owns Ferrero. His money was divided among his family. One of his sons, Claudio, is the CEO of Brooks Brothers. And Forbes estimated his net worth to be $3.9 billion. He also owns shares of Generali, Mediobanca, Unicredit, and Covivo, which are huge companies. Even after Leonardo, Essilor Luxottica is doing great. They make over 13,000 frames per day. Also, the financial reports for Q1 and Q2 in 2023 are amazing. Essilor Luxottica is still growing. They have a vertical integration system in which there are suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, and retailers. Luxottica also does charity work with their one site. Monopolies are bad for the economy. There isn't any innovation because there is no competition. Because there is no urgency to innovate. Why spend tons of money for innovation when you can sell what you have? Monopolies other than prices can control workers' wages. There aren't many rival companies that a worker can go if they don't like their salary. I heard some opinions that monopolies are okay if you get a decent quality for what you pay for. Because sunglasses with a bad thing and bad UV protection can hurt your eyes in the long term. Personally, I don't agree with that. You can buy sunglasses with the same quality and UV protection for much cheaper. There are tons of sunglasses brands who sell online that try to rival Luxottica. Because of Luxottica, a pair of sunglasses cost like an older version of a phone. But people like expensive things. It gives them prestige and status. I mean, why buy expensive things if nobody can see that they are expensive? So, what does the future look like? What will happen with these companies that try to rival Luxottica? Will Luxottica run them out of business, buy them, or maybe leave them be so that they have a proof that they are not a monopoly and that they don't have to deal with lawsuits. Luckily, we will see that soon. Subscribe for more business content and business stories.